Welcome, welcome to Battleground Community United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Susan, and we all want you to know that whoever you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, you are loved by God and welcomed here. And now we can begin our time of worship with Patrick's Prelude. This is the call to worship. The living God is with us and with all creation. Let us awaken our hearts to the presence of God, saying, we praise you for your glory. We praise you for your glory. God before us, behind us, above us, upholding us. We praise you for your glory. God with us, among us, beside us, befriending us. We praise you for your glory. God within us, flowing through us, animating, harmonizing. We praise you for your glory. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Purify and unify the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may more perfectly love you and more worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we read in Colossians that above all we must put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And yet often in times of greatest need, we may find ourselves giving way to the stress and strain of battling one another, forgetting who the real enemy is. Harsh words spoken, friendships broken. We choose sides and draw lines. Feelings get hurt. The trail runs deep. It gets harder to forgive and keep moving forward. And sometimes we get stuck right there in the broken mess of it all. But we know that your love binds us. And Jesus tells us so in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. scripture reading this week is from Colossians 1 verses 15 through 20. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in Christ all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rules or powers, Things have been created through Christ and for Christ. Christ is before all things, and in Christ all things hold together. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that Christ might come to have first place in everything. For in Christ all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Christ, God was pleased to reconcile to God's self all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. Amen. Today, I want to reflect on kingdom living. And the reason is, is because today, this Sunday, is what we call Christ the King Sunday. It is the end of the Christian calendar. It is the climax of the whole kitten caboodle. And it is the message that Christ, Jesus, is King, or is Lord, or what I think all of you and I would be more familiar with is Christ is the boss, okay? He's the boss. And so that's what we're going to talk about on Christ the King Sunday because it's after a whole year, if we don't get the message by today that Christ is the boss, the good news is we get to start the calendar all over again starting next Sunday. And uh, if we don't get it this year, then maybe we'll get it next year. Or maybe we'll get it just a little more next year. It's a process. Okay, so it is also a Sunday where we are asked to make a decision. Uh, we will let other people, will we let other people boss us around? Other, you know, will we let our culture tell us what to do and think? Or are we going to let God be the one to tell us what to do and what to think? And that is our choice. It, are, it is our choice, not, every, not even every morning when we wake up, but it's really our choice every moment that we have. You know, the question is, we wake up in the morning and we say, okay, whose agenda am I going to follow? Am I going to follow the agenda of just any old human out there? Or am I going to follow the agenda of God. So I think a good place to start uh, with this whole idea is we have to ask ourselves this question. Because if we say no to this question, then the whole sermon is moot. So the question is this, do I, do you, do I believe that God is with do I believe right now in this sanctuary, or in your case, in your living room, do you feel in this moment that God is with you? That God is with every breath you take? 
So I, I want you just to, we're gonna do a little mini meditation here for a second, because the question is, do you feel God's presence? So I'd like you to take um, a deep breath and close your eyes. And close your eyes. And ask yourself this question as we are all still. a mini prayer, a mini meditation to just stop and be still and see if you, I, we can know God. So when you're out there, when you're sitting in your homes, wherever you are, your living room, your dining room, wherever you are, do you, did you feel, or even do you feel at this moment, do you feel in this moment that God is with you? In other words, do you sense God's presence that might be in your next breath? A, a lot of you are going to feel like, no, I don't feel that, Susan, and you know what? That is okay. That is actually normal. Most of us don't go around all day feeling God. Most of us don't even think about God during the day, especially when times are good. Then we kind of ignore God. But when times are bad, that's when we start to talk him up quite a bit. So I want to pretend for a moment that um, God you don't have to pretend. If, if you don't believe God is with you, then let's pretend. If you do believe God is with you, then let's go with that. So if God is in the here and now, if God is with you, if God is with me, if God is with us, if God is a reality all around us, then why wouldn't we make him our boss? Why wouldn't he or she be a king, be a lord? Why wouldn't we choose to do what God asks us to do rather than what the culture tells us to do or what other people tell us to do? If God is really truly in the same room as us, then why not? give ourselves totally and completely to the one whose sole desire is for us to be drawn into this divine, perfect love. Why would we not seek first the kingdom of God? So, the kingdom is something clearly, obviously, was very, very important to Jesus. I know that because it was the core of what he was teaching. The kingdom is actually talked about over a hundred times in the New Testament. It's the first message from his baptism. He comes up out of the Jordan. And, the, and um, the, the message is, repent, the kingdom of God is near. It's, just, it's, uh, it's the core of the Lord's Prayer, that prayer that we say every single week. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And it's told to his disciples. He tells his disciples, See, the first thing you do, don't do anything before you do this one thing. Seek 
first the kingdom of God. So where is this kingdom? Where should we look? It feels invisible sometimes. Mark, in the uh, Gospel of Mark, Mark has Jesus saying that the, that the kingdom of God has drawn near. And in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is saying, the kingdom of God is in your midst. And in the Gospel of Matthew, he has Jesus saying, and as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus says, seek the kingdom. And I think that he says this over and over and over again because I think that he knows that if we are seeking the kingdom, eventually we're going to find it or we're going to get at least a glimpse of it, right? And once we find it or once we get a glimpse of the kingdom, then we can journey toward it. So we have to seek the kingdom before we can do anything else. You know, what, what does the, the kingdom look like? He gives us so many hints. He says, well, the kingdom is like a farmer sowing seeds. Or he says the kingdom is like a woman working yeast into the dough. Or he says the kingdom is like a mustard seed the smallest seed of all, growing into something wonderful and wildly out of control. Or, he says the kingdom of God is like a net let down into a lake and catches all kinds of fish. Or, he says the kingdom of God is its people doing for others what they cannot do for themselves. I'd like to share with you the last time that I knew, felt, the divine boss with me. This COVID thing, it's been hard on all of us some of us more than others, and sometimes we don't even realize it's having an effect on us. It just sneaks up on us, uh, the, the effects of, of being alone and not socializing and not touching and all of that. And some, for some people, it's like, it's like COVID is poking us or, or pinching us every day, and, uh, and it's not sneaking up on us because we feel it. You know, COVID is a drag. Now, okay, so now you all know, if you don't know, here's the news, I am bipolar. And I am very well medicated, which is a great thing. Because instead of having these huge up and downs, I, I do seem to coast the, you know, the roller coaster a little bit, but it's, it's fairly mild. I always say that God has his hands in the pharmaceutical business. Maybe not the insurance business, but the creation of these drugs that help us so much. But nevertheless, here I am, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was spiraling down. But for a while, I didn't even realize how, um, how I was falling into the darkness. But I was spiraling down, and I was spir spiraling down pretty fast. And um, a trusted friend, sat with me and asked me some really good questions. Some questions that were meant to help me think about exactly how can I move from this very dark place out of this hole and, and into the light. And you may recognize these words because these are the words that I tell you when you come into my office distraught or, or feeling, um, feeling low or feeling like life is really hard. You, you know, I tell you that, that, that God is with you 
And so here I am feeling like I'm completely in the dark and I'm telling myself, God is with me. Well, do I feel that? Do I know that? No, it's just, they just feel like words. And um, I'm in this dark hole and, uh, and I tell myself, just like I tell you when you come to my office, I tell you, you will feel God's love. And you probably are going to feel God's love through other people. That seems to be how God works. So I'm telling my, myself that, you know, I'm pastoring myself. And again, they're just words. They're not really helping me at all. I'm in this dark hole and I am stuck there. Now that was a Thursday. On Thursday evening, we tape. Um, we tape this service. And on this particular Thursday evening, Lori Rodriguez presented me with an incredibly generous gift for Pastor's Appreciation Day, which totally blew my mind. And the generosity was one thing, but what was even more striking and more meaningful were the so many cards that were just love notes. And I call this a God incidence. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in God incident, God incidences. And it was a God incident that Lori presented me with love on the day that I could not feel it, on the day that I needed it the most. So having this love that is there but you can't feel it you feel abandoned you feel alone you feel disconnected you feel like you don't belong to anything you come back to life through people through other people and when that box of cards and and that huge check was offered to me. It wasn't a check and it wasn't cards. She gave me a box of love, a box of God's love. Now the good news is this, that God somehow told you all to do that. And God somehow told Lori, don't give it to Susan the week before, which is what she was supposed to do. Hold on to it. And God somehow worked through all of you. And just that love boosted me up out of the darkness. Now, I, I didn't like fly out of the darkness and into the sky and the heavens and everything was great. Um, that would be a manic episode and that's not good. But it did help a great deal. And it helped me climb out of this darkness because of you. And so the good news is that God calls us to do something and we can choose to obey God. We can choose to listen to this holy boss of ours. We can be sure that, um, that if we don't listen to our holy boss, if we ignore our boss, if we don't do the tasks that our boss puts before us, the good news is we will never get fired, ever. God never fires us. If we don't do the task that our boss tell, told us to do, then our boss just gives us another task to do and we get to choose again. Am I going to do that task or not? And then most of us, myself included, will decide, eh, not going to do that. God asks hard things. These tasks are countercultural. People are going to be mad at me if I do that task that God is asking me to do. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get fired. I'm going to get another chance. I 
really feel that um, sometimes when we take the task to heart, when we obey, trust and obey, you know that hymn? When we trust and obey God, there is this feeling that I know you know where we feel connected to God, where we feel like we are actually partners with God. And, and there is no feeling at all like the feeling when we are connected to God and we're doing God's work. And then there's the times when our lazy selves choose to go with the culture rather than what Jesus taught us to do. And so we say on Christ the King Sunday that we are reminded that we have a choice. Are we going to let God be our boss? Or are we going to let people be our boss? But here's the thing. This is not something that just happens one Sunday every year. It's something that we can choose every single morning we open our eyes. Even better, we can choose it every single moment when it comes into our minds. And so we're given the same choice. You and me and everyone in the world. Is God your boss or not. Happy Christ the King Sunday. Here's our offering. Our mission is to engage in God's mission to feed the hungry, give something to drink to the thirsty, and to wipe the tears from every eye. This is accomplished through our gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Give generously so that God's will might be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we are your people. We carry your presence. Use us and our gifts to accomplish your mission in the world. Multiply our effort to meet every need. This we pray in the name of Christ, whom with you and the Holy Spirit reign in our hearts and lives, one God, now and forever. Amen. And here is your benediction. Go forth this week, pouring the love of God upon the hearts and lives of all you meet, so that hope and unity might take root and blossom. And as you go, know that the God who created you, 
the Christ who redeems you and the Spirit who empowers you is with you today and forevermore. Amen.